Hey guys, today we're gonna do a safety checklist. All the things that you should do before you leave to go camping to make sure your trailer's safe. And, do you know what this is? Can you guess? Leave a comment below if you know what it is. This is a tool that I'm gonna tell you about later that you really should have if you don't. So, stick with me, let's get this thing done. One more thing I forgot. Be sure to stick around to the very end and I'm gonna have a link to download this PDF that I created with this whole checklist. This will be great. You can print it out anytime you're about to go camping, run down the checklist, make sure everything's safe. And it has all of the torque specs for all of the Intec trailers on it. So check it out, it's free. Download it, be safe. The very first thing I like to do is check the receiver hitch. Just make sure everything's tight, that the pin is in place, your cotter pin's in place. I've got this extra device here that helps it from, from rattling and moving around. You just wanna make sure everything's all cinched up. And my hitch pin has a lock, so I just make sure that that's locked. It's, it stays on there all the time, so I know it's locked, but uh, if you have a locking type, just check that lock. If you look at the receiver from below where the ball goes in, there's the latching mechanism here that sometimes will get stuck in this position like this. So just check that, make sure it's pulled back so that you can mate up very easily so this area here is open. Next, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the hitch lock is firmly Clamp down, locked in place, and you can see the hole alignment here where the lock will go in there. Uh, this is the style lock I use. Uh, super important step, make sure you do this. You do not want your trailer to come off the ball. So this is what keeps it in place. Lock it in place, double check it, make sure that pin isn't gonna come out, put the dust cap on, and then really give it a good check. Make sure this thing is secure. Try to unlatch it, beat on it, curse at it, call it names, make sure it is tight. This is super important. After that, all you're gonna do is raise up your jack stand and make sure that this bolt mates up and snaps in place there. Holds it in place, you're good to go. Next up is the safety chains. Make sure you cross your safety chains. Driver side goes to the passenger side, passenger side goes to the driver side. This is from what I understand, uh, if the ball hitch came off and the trailer fell down, it would actually cradle it and help you have more control of the trailer if there was a failure with the, with the ball hitch and the hitch receiver. Hook up your emergency brake, just double check they're crisscrossed and you're good to go. When I first got my trailer, I didn't know anything about a seven pin connector, but there's a little latch here that clasps. So when you plug it in, make sure that that snaps down in place, it keeps it from popping out. If you have airbags, now's a good time to level your tow vehicle with your trailer. We may do another video on airbags later. It's always a good idea to make sure your marker lights are working, your brake lights are working, and your turn signals. This also verifies that your seven pin connector was connected correctly. Here's a step you wanna make sure you don't miss. Make sure all of your leveling jacks are in the upright position. Uh, that'd be a bad situation if you started driving off and these things were down, and especially if you're off-roading or something, you could cause some really bad damage to your trailer. Another quick, simple step, just make sure you've stowed all your gear and everything's exactly the way you want inside your trailer, and there's that tool again. What do you think it is? I always like to take a moment to just make sure that I've turned off everything inside the trailer. Uh, no need to leave lights on, bang, or the radio playing. Always a good idea to make sure that shore power cord is put away. It would be really unfortunate to drive away with that connected to the outlet. Make sure any power adapters you have are stored away. I like to keep them in the battery box here. And uh, Oh, what's this? Can you figure it out yet? It's coming. Stay tuned. Keeping these in here ensures you can always hook up to your generator or shore power. Just in case there's some unexpected weather, I always make sure to close my windows. Also like to close the fan on the roof. I know you can run with it open, uh, at least that's what it says in the manual, but I think it's a good idea to close it uh, just to make sure, especially if it's raining or whatever, no water gets in. 
This is a super important step. You want to make sure if you have an LP detector that you test that and you test your smoke detector. Uh, let me move this thing out of the way. So you want to make sure that the valve is closed on your uh, LP tank and that it's nice and secure. This is a good safety check. I like to open the kitchen slide and just make sure that my fridge is set and working and functioning the way I want, uh, running off of the battery, and that it's secured in with the strap. Have you ever gone camping and forgotten your wheel chocks? Make sure you stow them. I store mine on this tray because I don't have a tongue box. Next, we're going to go around and lock everything. Make sure you lock the deadbolt first and check that that's locked and then the handles. Uh, if you have a tongue box, you're going to want to lock that as well. Just double check, go around, make sure everything's locked and tight and you're good to go. Visually inspecting your wheel bearings and greasing them is actually pretty easy, at least it is on my 2018. You just pop off the dust cap, then you remove this rubber dust cap on the in inner seal here and it reveals the Zerk fitting. You can just place your grease gun right on this, uh, add a couple pumps of grease if you want to top it off and make sure it's all nice and slimy in there. And uh, just pull it off and replace the rubber seal. After that, you'll want to replace the dust cap and you're done. Checking tire pressure is a super simple process and it's critical because if your tire pressure is too low, it can cause your tires to overheat when you're on the highway. So what happens when they overheat? That's when you get a blowout and we want to avoid that. Okay, I've teased you long enough. This is a torque wrench. You can get them pretty inexpensively at Harbor Freight. I think I paid $15 for this one with a coupon and I've compared it to professional torque wrenches and it's pretty much dead on. What a torque wrench does is it allows you to set the wrench to stop and click to let you know that you've reached a certain torque specification. This is important especially on lugs that hold your wheels to your axle. So you set it by turning this adjustment dial at the bottom, get it to the proper torque setting that you want, and it works just like a regular socket wrench. You can do tightening or unloosening in either direction and it ratchets. I'm gonna tell you where to download the checklist right after I show you how to actually torque your lug nuts. So you get your torque wrench all set up like I showed you before, and you basically tighten just like you would with a regular socket and you'll hear it click once it reaches the appropriate torque. Click. And then you're going to do a specific pattern that is also shown on the checklist sheet that I'm providing for you to download. Make sure you get all five or six or four, it depends on your trailer, and you're done. It's that easy. In the description below there will be a link to our Facebook page which is where we'll be hosting this file to download. You don't have to join the group, although we'd love to have you, to get to this file. You can just go to our Facebook page and it will be in the file section and it will be also attached to a post. So thanks for watching with us. We really appreciate you. We hope you have subscribed. We hope you like it and please leave a comment. Tell us what you like, tell us what you don't like. Thanks again for watching.